The Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft Quality Foods, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Again this week, Bertie and I want to tell you about Gildy's Blade, the wonderful knife spatula now being offered as the premium bargain of the year by Parquet Margarine. You'll hear from Bertie in our next announcement. So have paper and pencil ready for big news from P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. what's going on in Summerfield. After a hard day at the water department, there's nothing the great Gildersleeve enjoys more than relaxing in a barber chair. <sighs> Give me a nice, close shave, Floyd. Okay, Commish. Say, uh, you uh, knocked off a little early today, didn't you? Early? Yeah, you're getting rid of your 5 o'clock shadow at 4.30. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I simply have things well organized at the office, Floyd. When I stop work, the water doesn't stop running. That's efficiency. Yeah. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. You uh, getting prettied up for the Jolly Boys tonight, Commission? Not exactly, Floyd. In fact, I may be a little late for the meeting. Huh? Well, why? I, I uh, promised Miss Milford I'd drive her home from the hospital. She gets off work at 8 o'clock. Uh, oh, 8 o'clock, huh? Uh, well, let's see. It's uh, 10 minutes from the hospital to your uh, little nurse's house. Then you have to uh, walk her up on the porch and say good night. Yeah. Uh, we'll expect you about 11.30. Mm. <laughs> it doesn't take me that long to say good night. I guess not. Uh, you did say you was efficient, though, didn't you? <laughs> All right, Floyd. <laughs> uh, take your time, Commish. The, the judge is going to be late, too. Oh, what's keeping Horace? He's having his house exterminated. Exterminated? Yeah, it seems he's got ants in his kitchen. <laughs> the judge has ants? Yeah, and silverfish in his closet Oh, poor old Horace Last year it was aphids in his rose trellis And now it's silverfish in his closet <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, he's getting rid of all them things uh, They're going to seal up the house, you know And pump it full of pest control Fumigating, eh? Yeah, yeah the, uh, the judge is thinking of taking a room in a hotel over the weekend Wonder why the old goat doesn't stay home and get sealed in I've seen moths fly out of his pockets. <laughs> uh, you're kidding, ain't you, Kamish? Yes, Floyd. Yeah. Well, I, I kind of feel sorry for the old judge uh, having to pack off to a hotel like that. Uh -huh. I wish me and Lovey had a room for him. <laughs> oh, why don't you take him in, Kamish? He's a fellow jolly boy, you know. Floyd, I don't have room for him either. Got more room than anybody else. I've got more family than anybody else, too. Besides, you know how finicky the judge is. Only be for two short days. Floyd, with a judge in your house, there's no such thing as a short day. Can I order another cup of coffee for you, Catherine? No, thank you. Nice of you to buy my dinner, Throckmorton. Glad to do it. And I hope you don't mind the hospital coffee shop. Not at all. I always wondered what they fed people in hospitals when they weren't in bed. I usually eat earlier, but I became very interested in one of my patients. Oh? Lady patient, I suppose. No, a man. Hmm. Uh, Catherine? Yes? Any of those patients ask you for a date? Oh, no. That's against hospital rules. Love those hospital rules. <laughs> <laughs> of course, sometimes they call up after they leave. What a sneaky thing to do. <laughs> and I hope this man does. You do? He can hardly wait to get out of the hospital. I'll bet. <laughs> no, right, Morton. Yeah. He's anxious to get home because he and his wife have just adopted a little orphan. Well, fine fella. Sorry he's been sick. <laughs> you know, that's one thing I like about my work. A nurse sees so many people doing wonderful things for others. Oh, yes. 
This man can't really afford it, but he's giving this little child a home. Well, good for him. Mm. I admire him so much. He's so generous and warm-hearted. Well, nobody ever accused me of having a cold heart. What? Come to think of it, I have a pretty warm one. Oh, I know you have. You bet. In fact, I've decided to help somebody out, too. Who, Throckmorton? Well, poor old Judge Hooker is fumigating and has to get out of his house. He's going to a lonely old hotel, but by George, I'm not going to let him. I'm going to insist that he come to my house. Oh, that's thoughtful of you, Throckmorton. It thrills me when people do nice things like that. I could kiss you. Well? But it's against hospital rules. Hate those hospital rules. <laughs> me an hour at Catherine's front door, but I got around that hospital rule. <laughs> Guess I'm late. Oh, there's Peavy tuning up his violin. <clears throat> Sounds like a cat with his tail in a screen door. Uh-oh, the judge is here, too. Hope he doesn't bring his flute to my house. I'd have to go to the hotel. Hey, here's the commish. Now we can get going. Hi, commish. Hi, Floyd. Evening, Gelder. Hi, Judge. Hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gelder. <laughs> uh, band practice tonight, fellas? Sure. Get the trombone off the piano, commish. Uh, give us a blast. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Where's the chief? Uh, he's uh, under the weather tonight, commish. Uh, too bad. Hope he's better soon. Yeah. Uh, I'm taking over the bass drum for tonight. Better tune up, Gelder. Uh, before we start, Judge, I... I'd like to talk to you about something. We can talk later, Gildy. If I wait any longer, I'll lose my lip. Well, button it up, Judge, and let's play. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> here's your copy, Commish. Uh, a waltz. Well, the Merry Widow. This ought to be fun. Okay, now, uh, everybody follow the music. I hope Mrs. Peavy won't mind if I follow the Merry Widow. <laughs> Peavy. Okay, fellas, let's go. Wait a minute, Floyd. Give me a chance to warm up. Okay. Uh, you're warm. <laughs> Did you break it, Mr. Gildy? Yep. All right, Phoebe. Okay, now, uh, let's go, gang. Look, when we come to the judge's solo part, everybody lay off. Well, the judge has a solo, eh? Okay, now, a one, a two... showing definite improvement. Don't you think so, P.B.? Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> yeah, very good, P.B. Let's all relax and open a Coke, huh? I want to talk to the judge anyway. Yep, by the way, Judge, how's the fumigating coming along at your house? Men are starting in the morning, P.B. I'm checking into a hotel tonight. Well, Judge, that's what I want to talk to you about. Oh? I'm not going to have an old friend of mine staying at a hotel. You're coming to my house. Hey, I thought... Oh! Floyd. <laughs> Judge, you must come home with me. Well, thank you for the kind invitation, Gelder, but I'm looking forward to staying at the hotel. You can't do that, Judge. I'll consider it a personal insult if you don't accept my warm-hearted hospitality. My, my. Uh, uh, the commission uh, must have an angle. No, Floyd. How about it, Judge? But, Gildy, I'd only inconvenience oh, you. Oh, no, not you, Horace. At the hotel, I'll have complete privacy, maid service, bellboy. Well, we've got Bertie, and Leroy can be the bellboy. 
You've got to come, Judge. Gildy, why insist? It can't mean that much to you. Oh, yes, it does. What are you trying to do? Show me up in front of Catherine? What? Uh, <clears throat> nothing, Judge. <laughs> Say you'll come. Well... Don't you think he should stay with us, Peavy? Well, hotels are a little expensive. <laughs> Say, that's right. At least when I leave Gildy's house, he won't present me with a bill. <laughs> well, now, I... Won't. All right, Peavy. <laughs> Gildy, I've decided to come. I can't resist such a sincere invitation. Well, I'm glad you can't, Judge. Now, where are your bags? They're in my car. So is my rowing machine. Yeah. Rowing machine? Oh, I wouldn't think of going anywhere without it, Gildy. I get up every morning at 6 o'clock for an hour's exercise. 6 o'clock, Judge? Of course. That's why I'm so robust. Robust? <laughs> rowing at 6 o'clock. What a bust this weekend's going to be. <laughs> Turn to the great Gildersleeve in just a minute. You've probably all heard about Gildy's Blade, the amazing knife spatula we're offering as a phenomenal premium bargain on this program. Tonight we want you to hear from a woman who's already using one in her own kitchen, who can tell you just what a real cook thinks of this unique kitchen implement. It's none other than your old friend, Bertie. Mr. Stewart, I think that knife spatula is just about the handiest, most practical thing I ever used in my kitchen. It certainly is. It's two fine kitchen knives and an all-purpose kitchen spatula, all in one. One edge of Gildy's blade is a lifetime serrated edge that never needs sharpening. Wonderful for slicing fruits, vegetables, bread, cake, anything you want to slice without crushing. The other edge is a hand-honed, razor-keen straight edge for all other kinds of cutting. Every woman ought to have one, Mr. Stewart, because it's such a good knife. It's more than a good knife. It has two different kinds of cutting edges, and Gildy's blade is spatula-shaped. It mixes, turns, stirs, scrapes. So it's two fine knives and a spatula all in one. Now, Gildy's blade is a real $2 value. It's made by Kalon, world-famous manufacturers of fine cutlery. But you can get one for only 50 cents plus the label or wrapper from any loaf of bread you buy at your grocer's, and the red end flap from a package of parquet margarine. Tell them where to send, Mr. Stewart. Every woman is going to want one because it's wonderful in so many ways. Just send your 50 cents, the bread wrapper or label, and the parquet red end flap to Kraft Foods Company, Box 5939, Chicago 77, and be sure to include your own name and address. I'll repeat that address. Kraft Foods Company. Box 5939, Chicago 77. Better tell them to do it now, Mr. Stewart. That's right. Hurry. Get this wonderful knife spatula. Send for Gildy's Blade tomorrow. Well, let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. Tonight, he's helping out a fellow jolly boy. Rather than have Judge Hooker go to a hotel while his house is closed, the water commissioner has invited him to stay at his house for a couple of days. Are you sure I won't be overcrowding you, Gildy? Of course not, Judge. I should have thought to invite you sooner. Well, it's most considerate of you to take me in and give me a rip over my head, old man. Now, don't you mention it, Horace. As Samuel Taylor Coleridge so aptly said, friendship is a sheltering tree. Uh, oh, the joys that come down shower like a friendship. Quiet, Judge. We don't want to waken the little family. Oh, I'll be as quiet as a mouse. Uh, Where shall I put my bag? Yeah, we'll put them right here in the den. Very well. Sorry, Gildy. Now, let's get my rowing machine. Oh, yes, your rowing machine. Are you sure my luggage won't be in your way here, Gildy? My way? Well, uh, Judge, I thought you'd like to sleep here in the den. More private. Oh? Uh, Don't glare at the couch, Judge. It pulls out into a nice, soft bed. Does it? Let's see. It needs oiling, I guess. What makes it so lumpy? Lumpy? Now, Judge, it's very comfortable. It's a faithful old horsehair couch. Well, I don't want to speak ill of a faithful old horse. <laughs> but I just remembered, Gildy... I'm allergic to horsehair. What? Uh, 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 <laughs> Judge, you're just saying that. No, I'm not, Gildy. 
Let's put my things back in the car. I better check into a hotel. Of course. There's somebody in every room in the house except mine. Oh? All right, I'll sleep down here. You can have my room. <laughs> Grab that end of the sheet, Judge. You can help me put on the clean linen. Didn't anybody know I was coming, Gildy? Well, I didn't have time to prepare for you. I didn't know you had your bags in the car tonight. The sheet, please, Judge. Oh, yeah. It's been a long time since I've made up a bed. Well, it's not exactly in my line, either. Tuck in the corners, Judge. I can't tuck in the corners. The bed's against the wall. I know it. All you gotta do is push it away from the wall. Very well. Shh. Not so loud. You'll wake up the family. Now push. I'm pushing. Catch the nightstand. Must have set off the alarm clock. Yes, yes. It can't be time to get up. (laughs) Very funny. Hey, Uncle, what's going on in here? Leroy. Lovely, Leroy. Oh, it's Judge Hooker. I thought you caught a burglar. Yeah, no, Leroy. The judge is staying a couple of days. Uncle Mort, are you dreaming? No, Marjorie. I wish I was. Go back to bed. You too, Leroy. I'm sorry I disturbed the household. Well, at least we didn't wake up Bertie. Miss Daddy! Ooh. Daddy, for our bed? No, Bertie. I don't have a bed to fall out of. <laughs> Judge is right. This is a lumpy couch. Mm. Horse hair. Must have left the horse in it. <laughs> what, what was that? Oh, that big spring that snaps the back of it up. Hope it holds. Never did trust these folding contraptions. Just have to lie still, that's all. A thing like this could throw a man out of bed. <sighs> Judge is a bother, but it's nice to know you're doing somebody a good turn. <sighs> Makes you feel good. I'm tired. Glad everything's quieted down. Reedle, deedle, deedle, deedle. <laughs> Must be Leroy. Guess he can't sleep. Too bad we awakened the little fellow. What is it, Leroy? It's I, Gildy. Uh, I just wanted to say good night to my host. Good night. <laughs> Ooh, what a night shirt. The old goat looks like a zebra. <laughs> Everything's settled at last. (sighs) What a couch. I'd be more comfortable on the floor. (laughs) I'm on it. In your hand. Oh. Nope. <laughs> Didn't mean to frighten you. Looking for a place to shave, Bertie. Yes, sir. <laughs> Judge Hooker shaving in the bathroom? Yeah, he's been primping for an hour. Of course, it takes quite a while for the judge to make himself presentable. I think it's mighty nice of you to invite the judge over. Yeah, nice. Bertie, can I have a basin of hot water? I'll shave out here on the service porch. Hi, Bertie. Hi, Al. Morning, Leroy. Hello, Leroy. What's for breakfast? Leroy, you're not ready for breakfast. You haven't even combed your hair. Yeah, I know. I can't even wash my face. Yeah, well, I'm sorry you haven't had a chance to clean up. Who's squawking? (laughs) Bertie, make that two pans of hot water. Oh, for corn's sake. It'll take a little while to heat it. The judge uses a powerful lot of hot water, and I was going to wash clothes this morning. Oh? But it's nice to have the judge around. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, my dear. Bertie, get another wash pan for Marge. Never mind. Everything's clear upstairs now. It's about time. The judge will be down in a minute. Now, here's what he wants for breakfast, Bertie. He wrote it out? 
He's on a health diet. Oh, my goodness. Well, I'll be glad to fix whatever the judge wants. Carrot juice. Carrot juice? One piece of whole wheat toast with the crust cut off. He certainly got his crust. <laughs> Cocoa made with skim milk. And what's this he's got on here about an egg, Mr. Gillsleeve? Oh, he wants it coddled, Bertie. Well, Bertie better get busy. I can see she's got a lot of coddling to do. <laughs> now, Bertie, like you say, it's nice to have the judge around. Yes. <laughs> Commissioner, you've had a long day at the water department. Yeah, guess the judge is home already. There's his little cape hanging on the hall tree. Evening, Mr. Gillsleeve. Oh, Bertie, what are we having for dinner? I'm glad you asked me that. We're having barley broth. Broth? Green salad with no dressing, boiled rice, and eggplant instead of meat. Eggplant? That's Coddled? What, that's what the judge ordered. Hmm? Well, Bertie, we should have something a little family likes. Mr. Gillsleeve, you said accommodate the judge. That's what you said. But... And that's what he ordered. Uh... Bertie can't cook to please everybody. This ain't no hotel. <laughs> uh, Big-hearted, coddled egg Gildersleeve. It was a wonderful dinner. The eggplant was delicious. Yeah. Shall we get out the checkerboard this evening? Judge, I thought I might drop over and see Catherine this evening. You and I have been seeing quite a lot of each other. Very well. I suppose we know each other well enough so that you can go off and leave me alone in the house. All right, Judge, we'll play checkers. <laughs> morning, Leroy. Yeah, since six o'clock when the judge started rolling. Uh, good morning, family. You up too, Mr. Gillsleeve? Yeah, Bertie. Who can sleep with that rowing machine going? He made me seasick. <laughs> I'll bet he's paddled 50 miles this morning. <laughs> now he's a riverboat. <laughs> Uh, but a whole breakfast, Bertie. We're waiting for the Robert E. Lee. <laughs> oh, by George, I'm not going to play checkers tonight. Marjorie, do you and Bronco mind if I have the parlor this evening? But you and Judge Hooker had it last night. I thought this was his evening to leave. Well, it is. But he may want to hang around. That's why I've cooked up a little plan. A plan? Yeah, a humdinger, too. I'm having Catherine over. Oh. Yeah, when he sees I have a date, he'll surely leave. Of course, I've enjoyed having the judge, but he'll leave. <laughs> All right, Uncle. You and Miss Milford can have the parlor. Thank you, my dear. You're a sly, Gildersleeve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hi, Bertie. of you to come over, Catherine. Oh, I understand, Throckmorton. After all, you have a guest in the house. Yeah, and I couldn't leave until he leaves. And he'll be leaving any minute. Then we'll have the parlor all to ourselves. Oh. Yep. Leroy's over at Piggy's, and Bertie stacked the dishes and went to a movie. She did? Nerves. Oh, here he comes now. Guess he's all packed. Good evening, Miss Melford. Hello, Judge. Judge, where are your bags? My bag? I mean, can I help you pack? <laughs> Thank you, Gilda, but I'm not ready to go yet. Oh? Thought you might be ready. This is the night we lose you, isn't it? Uh, won't you sit down, Judge? Thank you. Well, what are you two doing for amusement? Well... <laughs> Miss Milford, perhaps you'd like to see my stereoptic and slide. Thank you, Judge, but I see quite a few slides at the hospital. Oh, but those are germs. 
I bet you haven't seen Old Faithful in Yellowstone Park. Old Faithful, if I didn't know the judge so well, I'd turn off his water. <laughs> Let me go get the slide. Judge, don't go and pack your bag. But it isn't packed yet. Well, let's go pack it. As host, I think I should help you. Yeldy, I'm not ready to go yet. Oh, my goodness. Excuse me, Catherine Doorbell. I'll get it, Gildy. I'm sure it's for me. For you? Hello, Throckmorton. It was awfully nice of you to take the judge in like this. I'm the guy who's been taken in. What? Catherine, sometimes a man can have more heart than common sense. I was right, Gildy. It was for me. A little something I ordered from downtown. Oh, a life preserver for your rowing machine? Matter of fact, Gildy, it's for you. <laughs> what? That package? A small token of my esteem for you personally, and in appreciation of your warm hospitality these two days. Oh, Judge, you shouldn't have done it. And such a big package. What's in it? Why don't you open it and find out? It's a humidor of 50 cigars. 50 cigars? The very finest quality. Isn't that nice? Well, Judge, I don't know how to thank you. <laughs> Not at all, Gildy. That's why I couldn't leave. I had to wait for your present to arrive. Why, of course. This was mighty thoughtful of you, Judge. What a real friend. I hope I didn't give you the impression I was trying to hurry you off. And I, I hope that I haven't been a nuisance while here. No. <laughs> it's been a real pleasure, Judge. Mmm, uh, uh, cigars smell good. I think I'll light one. Judge, come over any time. My home is your home, old friend. You're always welcome. Thank you, Gildy. As a matter of fact, since my house is closed, I've been thinking it'd be a good time to have it painted. Huh? And it'll only take another three days. <laughs> I knew these cigars were loaded. <laughs> We'll hear from the great Gildersleeve again very shortly. Don't forget what Bertie told you. Send for one of Gildy's blades. Get this $2 knife spatula for only 50 cents. The label or wrapper from a loaf of bread and the red end flap of a package of parquet margarine. Send your half dollar, your bread label or wrapper, and your parquet red end flap to Kraft Foods Company, Box 5939, Chicago 77. Kraft Foods Company, Box 5939, Chicago 77. And hurry, this offer is for a limited time only. Hey, Unc. Uh, just a moment, Leroy. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to take a moment to thank the city fathers of the village of Upper Sandusky, Ohio, for making me their honorary water commissioner. And the community of Palm Desert, California, near Palm Springs, and the Shadow Mountain Club for appointing me honorary hot water commissioner. Gosh, a hot and cold running water commissioner. Yeah. <laughs> Good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Kathy Lewis, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. This is Jay Stewart saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Hot water, Commissioner. <laughs> Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Here's a taste test that counts. Try any meat without mustard. Then add a golden dab of Kraft prepared mustard to your next bite. Taste the difference. There are two kinds of Kraft mustard, you know. Salad mustard, delicately spiced for those who like their mustard mild, or Kraft prepared mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand. For remember this, when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get Kraft prepared mustard. <laughs> Next, join the excitement of breaking...